Oh, where you watch? Look where you watch. No, where you watch? Choose the right thing to watch. And this enough to watch. Sticky Stucky Sweet TV with Keith Gargan, Facebook and YouTube. And that enough to watch. The movie star flight take off from Pelper Time TV. Say so that. Boom. A big sound of a big tune. Ja all is Emmanuel I woe Ja Gideon I'm a Gideon The Gideon I'm a Gideon The Gideon I'm a Gideon Well, Gideon go bustin' out the mat Again, so much oppression Poor people face right now Them crying out for freedom Them crying out for free speech Then, said them want to stand up Like them black liberators Like Malcolm X and Martin Luther And the ancient monarchy Where come pay of the way, sir Free up black people from me Tear down them fence, yeah Gideon, I'm a Gideon The Gideon, I'm a Gideon the Gideon, I'm a Gideon, well The Gideon go bustin' out the mat I listen, I see, I, the power of the Trinity Give us the teaching of His Majesty And we know war, not every... Blue, Mr. Gargan, blue Blue till me dance up me toe This is Sticky Stucky Sweet TV with Keith Gargan. Good, healthy food with the X Factor. So give it a like, share, subscribe, and touch up that notification bell. And that is it. Look at that. He have some problem. Because when we talk about dual citizenship and theme argument on that, you know, make no sense. You can see, he have GLP written all over him. Nor did you give us back our lost labor that you have extracted at gunpoint. Deliver me from my enemy, my God. Set me an eye from those who rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity. Save me from the bloodthirsty men. For the only lion wait for my soul. The mighty gather themselves together against me. Not for my disobedience. Not for my sin, Lord. I have done no wrong, yet they are ready to attack me. Rise up, behold, and help me. You, Lord God of armor, the God of Israel, rose yourself to punish the nation. Show no mercy to the wicked, traitor, sealer. They return at evening, holy like dogs, and prowl around the city. Behold, they spat with their mouth, so they are in their lips, for they say, Who art us? But you, Lord, laugh at them, you scoff of all the nation. O oh, my strength, I wish for you, for God is my eye tower. My God will go before me with his loving kindness. God will let me look at my enemy in triumph. Don't kill them or my people may forget. Scatter them by their power and bring them down, Lord, our shield. For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them be catching their pride. For the causes and lies which they utter, consume them in wrath, consume them and they will be no more. Let them know that God rules in Jacob to the ends of the earth. Selah. At evening, let them return, let them owl like a dog and go around the city. They shall wander up and down for food and wait all night if they ain't satisfied. But I will sing of your strength. Yes, I will sing a load of your loving kindness in the morning. For you have been my eye tower, a refuge in the day of my distress. To you, my strength, I will sing praises. For God is my eye tower, the God of my mercy, Selah. Up and running, up and gunning. Sticky Stucky Sweet TV, Keith Gargan. Cassava, passava, mind over matter. Up and running. Well, right about now, right now, we have um, UIC, Joseph, Joseph Patterson, UIC podcast to really share and review because it's very interesting. Yeah, because, you know, we have to try to um, show more of this because everybody's just dumped on the two-party and things like that. But we have to try for really because what me see, you know, and what I'm going to like, you know, if Joseph Patterson, could, Joseph Patterson UIC could even get two seats so them can have a vice in you know, this thing. Yeah. Believe you me, I don't mind them get some seat from the GLP as well. That would be make it more better and glorify, right? More than anything else. So it don't really give the PMP a boots anyway. But anyway, as I'm saying, you know, there are a few guests on this podcast from different, you know what I mean, walk of life. 
And, but you know, you have one guess in this. Sometimes, you know, you look at these people and put themselves in a position. I don't know if I'm getting invited or, but you know, you can know them, you know, you can see their um, two face. This brother and him, Bishop, him is starting a lot of crap. And him, I don't know what I try to do. And you can see the angriness in him. Because sometimes when we look at them things, you know, that is the thing we pick up on and dissect these things and say, well then, yo, he's one of them. He's not really talking from him art. He might to try to pretend or something because he's not singing from the same him, 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 him sheet, right? Or walking on the same umbrella as where he should be doing. He might have some problem because when he talk about dual citizenship, and for him argument upon that, you know, make no sense. You can see, he have GLP written all over him, but him just trying to, because they always send them, you know, when, you know what I mean, I make them come in disguise. Just like Vegas, that's what Vegas do. And you come out now, I defend the GLP you now, because he turn upon him and have to do that. So he, this guy, uh, Bishop, is one of them. But anyway, overall, overall, Patterson always have a good debate. Him talk the right things, him talk very intelligent, talk very... And him, him, him always have the answer. That's why when Vegas joined him, you know, him crushed Vegas to pieces. <laughs> I mean like that, you know. So this guy, you know, although he don't agree with him, Bishop, but him still try to really deal with him, deal, um, respectable. But me personally, me, you know, my things there. Once me, what me know say well then is a false. Me not really want to deal with you with no respect. Me gonna just call you out as it is. I just saw me stay. So you bishop, your type of thing. Me not, me not really know where I come from because if you can agree with um Andrew Wally signing up with the um Privy Council and then you know me not understand you. And you try to find out can I excuse. Just like with Vegas I do. So we don't see we don't have the same umbrella. So I'm not trust you and your thing. You are the only one I'm not really um and everybody and everybody not disagree with you as well. It's not just me alone. But everybody not really disrespect you that on a level. Them come back to in arms and say, well then we all are fight for the same thing. But me know deeply, you're on a different levels. But well, anyway, we're not going to really um, stretch out the team because in, in all overall, you know, as I'm saying, the debate is, the beard is re very, very educate, educational, interested, and everything, and mind blowing and everything, you know what I mean? You can get something from this, and that's why I may get something from this. So I find one person on this podcast will really bias. And you don't know, you, well, we know him stand. And he must spoil the whole thing. That's why they always say, you know, one bad apple spoil the whole flock. Because everybody, everybody was on the same grounds and tried in the same way. It's going to be a better platform. That's what we want to hear. We don't want to have these people come and we I talk, no make no sense. And people, when you hear what I say, when you see what I talk about, it don't make no sense. I'm just give my thumbs down for where I deal with because I don't understand. But anyway, everybody have them own um, things to say. It's freedom of speech. You have to listen to what people have to say. Anyway, and that's why I say, well, then, overall, it's very, very intelligent reasoning. And Joseph Patterson always entertain that. Is a man never really get angry and thing like that. He must give your talk and then he can really rebuke you in a few one way. I mean like that and that's what it's all, all about. So you know, overall when I go really um cause it's not about um Bishop. This brother named Bishop. It's not about him. But me have to um try to reach out and say, well then where must say, you know make no sense people. I'm going to give him a big thumbs down. 
because I'm spoil the whole thing. And then when you see him wrong, you know, him try to come back little pan line, you know. This is your, this is where Vegas do as well, too, you know. Some say them people, them, you know, say so some dangerous people, them, you know. But them riding with the JLP same speed. But them come over there for, um, you know, this truck. That's all them is. They are distracts, distractor. That's what them come in and, and, and try to do on these people platform all the while. You always find some really bullshit people like these, you know. But anyway, we're not going to really... Um, I, I, that is not the argument. The argument is if you listen, the reasoning and the proper people who put them one pint together. We talk about a worry, um, debate on one negative brother. You know what I mean? So, overall, let's jump in and jump into the video. Here goes. Boom. So, if any one of them step out of line, he is able to just cut them. Now, here's where he was undermining the Constitution, which was already weak in its design. Now, the UIC's proposal for Constitution is let's have elected senators or elected independent of the prime minister by the parish so that when them come to parliament they can think and act and speak with independence and without any repercussions from the prime minister or, or whoever happens to occupy the executive that's the importance of a constitution on the ministerial side the way a minister is appointed under the current constitution is that the prime minister again gets to appoint any one of his mps to be a minister. So it means every MP, even though they're supposed to have been elected to represent their constituencies, are not really representing their constituencies. A, they're representing the party. The Prime Minister. B, they're representing the people who fund them and their party. And C, they're afraid to talk out because if they do, they won't get appointed to a ministerial position. So they're afraid. So the Prime Minister now have control over the House of Representatives because he commands the majority and he has control over the Senate. Both houses he has full control over. That's a weak constitution and a corrupt constitution by design. And we have to understand the mechanism there and mash them down or them go and mash me up as they have done. So what I want to do is for us to understand these mechanisms and then pursue with aggression the destruction of those colonial frameworks and put in place a more robust constitution that will give us the checks and balances to prevent the kind of corruption that we have now become used to. But let's move on quickly. I want to now shift the conversation, which is going to be a little bit more of what we're talking about now, to why we have this dual dual um, dual citizenship issue, right? Let's <laughs> begin by understanding how the Constitution feeds into this. Now, we have, first of all, in our Constitution, a foreign head of state, okay? We have a constitution with a foreign head of state. The king or queen of England, the monarch of England is our head of state. They head our country. When they want to say it is titular or ceremonial or whatever, it's still the head of your country is a foreigner, resident in a foreign country who has the highest honor and position in your governance structure okay the constitution is written if you read it carefully it's written to protect the interest of the monarchy instead of the people which it sees as subjects so our constitution do not see us as sovereign individuals or as a sovereign collective it sees us as subjects of another person or a group of persons, the, the, the head of the, the monarch and his or her heirs are what we're paying obeisance to in our constitution. Now, let's step back a bit and think about this carefully. Where is this really coming from? How has this guided us to where we are today? Why did we accept that as normal? We accept that as normal because in 1834, when we got freedom, so-called freedom, emancipation, you know, we celebrate Emancipation Day, when we got that fake freedom, then our people were not intellectually endowed and structurally organized to say to the powers that be in 1834, this is fake freedom because you did not give us back our land, nor did you give us back our lost labor that you have extracted at gunpoint, okay, or sword point, whichever. 
Uh, number two, fast forward 100 years later to 1944. So we were free from 1834 to 1944. And for that 100 years of freedom called emancipation, we couldn't vote. But in, eight, but in 1944, they gave us a oh, fake democracy where they controlled the system, designed two parties for us, eliminated Marcus Garvey, and made sure the system is designed to trick us that we're not going to vote, but our vote will be meaningless because who we're voting for are controlled by the establishment behind the scenes. Okay? Back then, we called them the plantocracy. That's 1944, 100 years between freedom. 18 years later, when they see that we have accepted that as being okay, and we have bought into it and started to use sticks and stones to beat up each other for our preferred party and saying, you know, we'll follow Buster till we die, and we love Norman Manley and then Michael Manley. We followed that in 1962, and we accepted the fake independence. Watch what's going on here now. Today, the same two parties using the same divide and conquer strategy is now leading us marching us towards a fake republic in 2024. And by the time they finish this game that they're playing with us, we are going to vote away more of our rights while thinking we're voting for a republic. Or we're going to vote no and end up with the status quo, which is we're still where we were before. Follow me carefully. Our leaders, the very people we have trusted for the last 80 years, they chose the monarchy over a republic. This implies that they accepted the status as subjects and they embraced the idea of being a part of the British monarchy and a part of its commonwealth. The evidence of this is that since 1962 to today, 61, two years, we have kept the monarchy in place without even slightly changing it. So our leaders are fully committed to this. Watch me carefully. All of our leaders, or most of them, including the sitting prime minister, accepted the UK Privy Council as our final appeals court. And they have kept that in place and fought against any change from that. The PMs, including PJ Patterson and Andrew Holness, they have also accepted the King's Council status which means they honor the monarchy. So mentally, they're more deranged than the people they're leading. The people will never rise higher than their leaders. And if they're following deranged leaders, the people are also going to be deranged. So this so-called constitution does not see the Commonwealth countries as foreign powers, contrary to what you have heard in some of the other vloggers. So the Commonwealth countries like Canada, Australia, Bangladesh, uh, um, Canada, these Commonwealth countries are seen as part of the British domain, regardless of whatever weakness there might be in the attractions and connections. And so when the Constitution now talks about you signing up for a foreign power, if you have signed up to a passport in Canada or a passport in England or a passport in Australia, you have not signed up to a foreign power because you're still signed up to the Commonwealth of Britain. And while this may be argued otherwise in the courts, and in some countries they have argued against it and won, but the fact of the matter is, if we were to follow the logic of our constitution, the decisions of the framers of our constitution, the first parliament that adopted our constitution, you would see that we have accepted our status as subjects. And therefore, the Commonwealth as part of the domain of our head of state, and therefore, we're not paying allegiance to any foreign power. The only deciding factor, therefore, on your dual citizenship status and your ability to participate in their governance system and run for office or whatever the case may be, is how long you have been resident in the country that you're trying to run for. So if you go to, to England, if you as a Jamaican go to England, with your Jamaican citizenship as well as your British one, you can run for office if you're there the required number of days. The same for Canada and many other Commonwealth countries. Some have now upgraded their constitution, but I know we think the constitution doesn't matter, but here's how it matters because it sets the framework. And the question is, why have our leaders accepted this 
for the last 62 years? Why have they been parted to the system of the last 80 years? Why have they not educated the people to what has really been happening to them since 1834? For example, why have they continued to withhold the land from the people? My question to you all, do you now see why this constitution in its very foundation is bad for Jamaica and is the problem we're faced with as a Jamaican people? Your thoughts. Let's begin with Mr. Um, Duff, please. Yes, I've uh, been itching to say something, but um, <laughs> finally get the chance to. Anyway, um, really and truly, um, there are a couple of messages that um, I was broadcast by Mr. Glenn Bishop and the real patriot, so forth, that I'm going to disagree with there uh, regarding the population of Jamaica. Um, if you don't educate the people, you can't expect them to understand the current rules or the laws. I personally migrated to Canada as a child. And if I never understood the laws of this country, I'm telling you, I would have been in worse condition based on my skin color. And that's a fact because I was already a target just by choice of um, country where I was born in. So if I didn't understand the rules and how to function here, I definitely would not end up where I am today. So that shows me understanding or knowledge of the, the place or the laws and the rules or education or the constitution is very important. So one of the reasons or the tools that they've used to, to distract or subdue and suppress the, the population of Jamaica is the knowledge. And if the knowledge is not there, no matter how hard and how many changes you can do to the constitution and you don't understand what is currently going on, you will not be able to um, get the benefit out of it. Yes, I agree with some of these uh, questions and stuff. So, you know, because there are things that Jamaica, Jamaica should have done. The leadership is not the only issue because when the leadership was presented with a constitutional um, accords and all these, you know, from in 62 or so forth, they themselves perhaps weren't even knowledge and it's been proven in history. If you go to a lot of um, texts, when the Europeans travel the world, they did travel the world and they go to countries where they know they can manipulate and easily influence for their benefit. And that is currently going and it goes on right up to today, including our educational system. There's no place in Europe that they adopt the African um, educational system as is and, and put it into practice. No, they modify it to their own benefit. And that is a fact. I, there is no, no country at all, even though we know where the history and where the foundation of these things are coming from. So it is, yes, it, it is not an excuse that Jamaican were because of lack. We were lacking in knowledge and understanding why we are in the condition we are. Yes, but also they have a systematic um, tools that can oppress and hold and withheld from the population. That's it. All right. Anybody else want to jump in? Just open your mic. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, go I would ahead. like to talk. I, I understand, Mr. Patterson, how you you started in the past where it was the Commonwealth of Nations, of British nations. So all of those nations, all of those nations colonized by the British Empire um, to, to make that empire more prosperous. And if we as a nation, when, when we were being given this so-called independence, we were left to fund our own bill or fund our own debt as a country or fund our own development. The, the land point is also an important point. Now, if we are a country that is expected to carry our own weight internationally, then I do not think that any association with other Commonwealth countries should be more important than the country's interest to provide for that country's own benefit or for its citizens. Now, if you can tell me one benefit that Jamaica will gain by allowing a member of any parliament, any at any sector of government to be allowed to leave Jamaica 
after serving any amount of time, then that benefit alone would, would make me concede my point. But there is no benefit that Jamaica can gain by creating a framework that allows someone to be rep um, elected in Jamaica to serve in government or in any capacity in the country, supposedly, supposedly for the nation's interest. And that person is also a citizen of a foreign land. The truth is, you must have vested interest in the product for you to, for, for, for anybody to take you serious in your intention to do what it takes for the benefit of that place, that business. Okay. That country. Wait, one second. I want that point to be heard and I want us to debate that point. But we don't reach this yet. So I'm going to hold it, just hold it a little bit. I know you're ready to let it go. But just hold it a little bit. I'm going to come back to it because it's a very important point. Any point on what we have, what I've said so far, I want to hear any rebuttals to mm -hmm. what I haven't yet dealt with the, the, the dual citizenship as a, you know, the way you're talking about it. We're going to get this yet. But any other points on what I've said before? Well, I want to hear any feedback on that, any questions, concerns. Yeah. Go ahead, Miss Swalker. <clears throat> Sorry. I just want to say that <clears throat> when you look at the Canadian Constitution, and I'm pretty sure it's the same for the Jamaican Constitution. The Constitution is the highest law in the land. That means every policy, procedure, every action is derived strictly from the Constitution. That's the importance of the Constitution. When citizens are lost, it's because they're not familiar with the Constitution and the acts. And the government tend to abuse um, people's ignorance of the Constitution. So it's very important. Now, when I take a look at the Jamaican Constitution and I made a comparison to the Canadian Constitution, I noticed that the Jamaican Constitution is not written for Jamaican because it's not written for the lame man. It's written for lawyers or high, a high um, qualifi uh, qualified individuals. So already it is not there to um, prosper the Jamaican just by looking at it is not very legible when you compare that to the Canadian so it's not simplified for the average Jamaican to understand it and that creates a, le a, a level of confusion and disconnection and secondly also when I look at the Jamaican constitution um, the governor general is foremost written all throughout that constitution so the Constitution speaks to England and the interest of England. So again, if we're talking about Jamaica and we're using a document that is the guiding principle over all affairs in the country, and that Constitution is written not to be in line with its citizens, um, we have a real problem because every action that is taken is going to be taken from that document before it goes to anywhere else. And I just wanted to say that. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ms. Walker. You make a very important point uh, where you refer to the fact that the document is not written in the language of the Jamaican people. For one, it's not written for them to. In fact, even the, the, the brightest Jamaican will struggle with the document that, to really go through it and have a real appreciation. I love the way, for example, the Americans wrote their constitution. You, by reading just the preamble alone, just the preamble, you know what I'm going to talk about. You know what I want to go with your country, what their mission is. Jamaica have the mission. Our mission is to serve the monarchy. That is what you see in the Jamaica. Our mission is to serve the monarchy, to love the monarchy, to adore the monarchy, to obey the monarchy, and to look out for the interests of the monarchy and their heirs. Then we have a bunch of other stuff that are mentioned, and one day later we add something about Bill of Rights and so on. But our constitution, which is not our constitution, the colonial constitution is written with the mission of the colonials in mind, with the desires of the colonials in mind, and not us. So we can't, I'm gonna to talk to this later, I'm gonna get back to this, but let me just jump now, unless somebody else wants to say something on what we just said. I want to jump to the next point, which I think will begin to give Mr. Um, Bishop the opportunity that he needs to jump into some areas. Now, um, given, given that our so-called constitution was not truly written by us or for us to further our cause as individuals and as a collective. I believe without a shadow of a doubt that it must be replaced 
not tinkered with, not edited, not reformed. The entire thing is wrong. So you have to start with the premise of why Jamaica, what Jamaica, where Jamaica, who Jamaica. Its entire basis and foundation is flawed. And the impact of that has been devastating and destructive to this very day. Even the kind of conversation you see our leaders have. I want you to take for a moment and go and just look at a conversation that say the president of the, the prime minister of Singapore has and the opposition and the, the, just listen to their MPs talk. Go and watch one of their parliament and you'll see the tenure. You'll see the, 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 the kind of conversation which is had, which we can't have. We just have aggressive fight, cost, cost conversation. Even myself, I've come back to Jamaica and I can't even have solid good conversation with people because we just want to fight my party my party this that we don't want to have a civil decent orderly intellectual conversation that talks about cause and effect how do you move from here to here not who did do this when and when my party didn't power this and when we have to stop these people and so my thought process on this and i could be wrong and you can correct me is that the basis is wrong, the foundation is wrong, and the impact has been devastating and destructive. We must scrap it, we must rip it up, we must abolish it, we must completely, 100%, replace it with a Jamaican constitution. And so for this to happen, our first and true constitution must reflect our aspirations, our history, and our reality. And here's why I say this. We have to make sure it reflects our reality as a people. And one such reality is that we are a nation robbed of more than half of its population by forced migration. Watch me know why we have to change this, why we have to replace this, why our first constitution must be designed to reflect not only our aspirations, which I don't think we have thought about. I have thought about it, but I don't think we as a nation have indulged in that. What they call reform right now is foolishness. Mickey Mouse, gameplay, distraction. We need to be talking about what is our real aspiration as a nation, as a people. And that discussion must be had in the context of our history and in the context of our present reality. One such reality, as I said before, is the fact that we have lost more than a half of our population to forced migration, many of us. And arguably, the best and brightest of us have been forced to exile this country, yeah, as economic refugees in other countries due to 80 years of bad governance. We should then seek to design a system that punishes these economic refugees by asking them to give up the benefits of their dual citizenship, Mr. Bishop but rather embrace them as full Jamaicans, even though they might have American, Canadian, British, German, Spanish, whatever it is, other citizenship. We cannot afford to punish them for something outside of their control. It's, it's the very same people who brought in this constitution, who agreed with it, who enforced it, who've caused many, many Jamaicans to run from this country. We must welcome the diaspora as an equal partner in our global family to help us reverse the brain drain in this country caused by this 80 years of JLP and PNP bad governance. We must remember... Point of information. Point of information. Sure, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, if we are going to take that view of it, then we need to really assess what led to the if the emancipation declaration what led to the end of slavery so let us not go back to 1962 let us go back to 1834 1836 1838 and the real reason for the and there you will find the real reason for our constitution it was the fight on the ground fire revolt rebellion that is what led to the constitution the interest that the colonizers were gaining 
from the plantations in Jamaica was being burned. The profits were being burned by the persons here. Persons here living it that risked their life to burn these plantations made the British in their parliament realize that it was no longer profitable to maintain what was the status quo. To have the British House of Commons in Jamaica where you have British lords ruling over the slave subjects in Jamaica for the financial benefit of the lords who were living abroad. Point, point taken, but hold on a second. It cannot be. Let me, finish, let me finish this thought, and then you're going to see what you're saying, how it fits in perfectly. Let me finish the thought. Uh, I am one that must totally agree that if we never bond on some plantation, we'll get no changes. But if you're going to look at the past, you have to look at the complete past. World War I and II had its impact. It's not just what we did in Jamaica that created the outcome. It's a global confluence of issues that brought us to that point. But let me not stray too far. I want to finish this point. We must remember and we must respect and we must appreciate the billions in remittances which the diaspora sent to this country and sent many children to school, paid many health care bills. Hold on. Paid many health care bills, provided a pension for many seniors, and put food on the table for many struggling families. Let us not be foolish and misunderstand what we're talking about here. We were forced outside of our country. There are many people who want to come back home badly, but they were forced out of their country because of our own leaders. Not what happened in the past, but what is happening in the present. Since we took over our own country or pretended to take over our own country, we have continued to maintain structures and processes and models that cause us to run out many of our people. These same diasporans, have spent billions into our economy every time they return for vacation, graduations, champs, and funerals. The point I'm making is this. Any new constitution, and if we really want to move Jamaica forward, we must look at not just the past, but also the present reality. You can't have half of your people, more than half of your people, outside of the country Arguably, the best and brightest people of our country who have been forced out of it because every time we have a graduation from high school, 70% of the students that graduate do not have the skills that they need to have. 30% have somewhat the skills they need to have. And within three to four years, half of those who have the skills we need in this country are gone. So we're having more and more a concentration. And Mr. Bishop, I am hoping we don't resort to simply burning down the plantation this time, but that this time we use intelligence and strategy and design. And part of that design is to respect, appreciate, and integrate the diaspora in this country. I see to you now to speak. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, that's me. Yes, I have to respond. Yeah, go I have ahead. to respond. Yeah. Do what I'm saying. I will not try to minimize the importance of the support, the collaboration of Jamaicans living in Jamaica with the diaspora. No, they say he who pays the piper picks the tune. And if the person here doing what it takes to fight this oppressive system of government, allow themselves to be swayed by the need for remittance, then pretty soon we will not be able to find what we are fighting for, this Jamaican culture that we all, because you see, every country has people that migrate. But there's a reason why Jamaicans abroad will stand tall and, and embrace their Jamaica or being Jamaican. It is, for one, maybe the spirit. It is the love of Jamaica. 
other persons migrate to um, maybe the US, and as soon as they reach, they'll start claiming US citizenship, and it will be deprived of their existence. But for some reason, persons from Jamaica, wherever they go, they want to hold on to, to that label of being Jamaican. And I'm saying, I understand that. But if we, the persons in Jamaica, are going to be charting a framework that will benefit, that will develop, that will enhance to its full potential Jamaica, then we have to put a, a framework in place to ensure that the persons that we are giving this responsibility have a vested interest in Jamaica. Now, for America, they, for, for, for you to become the president of the United States of America, in my research, I found that you have to be a natural born American citizen. There is no such provision in Jamaica's framework of governance. And I think if we were to find one reason that is the unit factor, the denominator that is that has caused the dilapidated state of Jamaica's government today, our governance today, that would be the reason. The fact that someone like Mr. Edward Siago, a known CIA operative, could have come to Jamaica and fight vehemently against policies um, put forward by Mr. Manley, who was a son of the soil, who was saying, you, the global push of governments, or I like to call them the collusion of governments that they formed with their UN, um, United Nations, all of their agencies, they put these agencies in place so that they can muscle or strong arm governments into doing what they want. So there once was the, the sugar tariff and, and they wanted to say to Mr. Manley that he can, um, they were going to be doing this. Uh, um, it was the CARICOM push and they were telling countries to stop planting certain crops in favor of having another country plant it and sell it to you for cheaper. Mr. Manley had to hold out and say, no, it's my sugar, it's my country, and I reserve the right to even price my sugar. You see, it is for these economic pushes that Mr. Manley was making that the international um, collusion of governments started to create, um, impose embargoes on Jamaica. And that is when things started going bad. If there is a Jamaica that is for Jamaica, let us say living in America, what is it that you would, right, how is it that you would expect that person living in America to serve in any capacity in Jamaica's system of government for the benefit of Jamaica? That person would have a primary responsibility to develop the area that they are living. Well, can I, can I make a... Sure, jump in. Go ahead, Zaria. Mm -hmm. on it. Um, under... If all things being equal, I would agree with that perspective that the person you would need to be homegrown to um, hold a, such a high position in the country. However, Jamaica's makeup is different and having lost so much of the brain drain now what has been left particularly after the, the, the most recent brain um, destruction of our, our small businesses during the FinSAC situation um, you now have people whose perspective have been limited to what's here those of us in the diaspora who have had a different perspective now you can look at and even guide in a more um, cohesive manner than what we currently have. And so under normal circumstances, yes, I believe that the person who is leading a nation should be homegrown. But in the situation where Jamaica is right now, it is in almost imperative that those of us in the diaspora intervene on the behalf of Jamaicans because what they are suffering and dealing with is something that they themselves can't come out of. 
Thank you. So and well said. We well, yeah. have, it is, it's, I'm happy that we have hold, hold on, Mr. Bishop. Hold your horses. Uh, uh, did you finish your thought, uh, Ms. Empress? Um, I just wanted to say I'm happy that uh, the, you, you created an option for people who can, we can look outside of what the current framework at something else that we can design that is in the benefit of, of uh, a new republic. Right. Thank you so much, um, Empress. Anyone else? Can I, in? Yes, I, I do have my <laughs> input. <clears throat> Seems like Jamaica is suffering from a duality complex. <clears throat> Because <clears throat> Jamaica have as a, the head of Jamaica, the British, um, the monarch. So already Jamaica has started off with its head being an outsider, a colonial power. Now we're talking about Jamaican citizens who are born and bred in Jamaica and have had to leave Jamaica returning to Jamaica with a wealth of knowledge and skills has contributed to the Jamaican economy vastly. What will Jamaica be today with this, if not for this migration of Jamaicans who are returnees or one of the challenges that many nations like the US, Canada and Europe face is how much remittance is being leaving their country to go back to homelands. So we're not just abandoning our country, we're outside facing various challenges, knowing fully well that we will never be fully accepted in the, um, um, the country that we migrated to and have complete devotion to the Jamaican and a pledge, pledge allegiance to Jamaica through many activities. And so make no mistake about it, we are full citizens of Jamaica and that's not an option. And a government doesn't dictate who is and who is not. We are not partial Jamaicans because we leave Jamaica. In fact, if it's to be argued, we're contributing much more so intellectually, economically, politically, and if you must um, go back into the politics, you had Marcus Garvey and the PNP party. There was a group of diasporan that was heading the PNP people's um, political party, the people's national party. So we have always been intertwined. Now, why is it that Jamaicans feel comfortable accepting a, a colonial state that was responsible for the enslavement of Jamaican, but have a harder time seeing one of their own with all good intentions representing Jamaica as head of state. What's the complexity there? I don't understand that. All right, thank you very much, Ms. Walker. Uh, any other thoughts from anyone else? Uh, that yeah, to... I, I'd like to- Mr. Partizan, may I say something? Uh, May I say something, please? Okay, go ahead, Ms. Samuels, and then Mr. Patriot. Okay. Um, according to what Clarion has said, listening to what is being said here in Jamaica by some people, they are saying, what if you are of a military age? And there are so many wars going on around between the Commonwealth and America and whatever. What if you are of age and they want to, you are, say you are the prime minister and MP and they want to call you to come in and serve in that war. How, you know, I don't know if Mr. Pattison have any word on that or anyone, mm -hmm. how will that be worked out? Because once they call you and said, come in, your we want you to go to whichever place there's a war going on how will that be how will you address that mr patterson sure sure there are many scenarios you can come up with uh concerning a dual citizen and um you know what can come up many scenarios and i love to look at scenarios because that's the way you build systems you look at possible outcomes and so on 
Um, you have remote uh, scenarios and then you have likely scenarios and you look at responses. Uh, if anyone happens to have, let's say today, Canada is in a war, I'm a Canadian citizen and they decide to call me up and say, I need to come and fight their war, for example. Um, I have a decision to make like anybody else. Let's say I am not a Canadian citizen, but Canada is involved in a war and they said, we're involved. does anybody want to volunteer? I could, if I'm not a Canadian, I could volunteer and gladly take me up. In fact, Jamaica, during the Second World War, our first premier, uh, Mr. Norman Manley, fought in the Second World War. Yeah. Um, and he was proud of it. If you read his book, it's well laid out as one of his greatest achievements. So we can find scenarios. But what we should focus on is the reality. Here's the reality. If you decide to serve your country, Jamaica, and the people of Jamaica invest their um, their 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 wishes in you, they invest their vote in you, you now have a decision to make. If you're faced with any kind of conflict, you can draw the line. And if you don't have that conflict, let's say you are not a dual citizen. There are many non-dual citizens who have sold out Jamaica. For example, it is our patriotic prime ministers who signed off on deals with our highways that gave the highway companies a deal that they can never lose as long as they're running this thing in Jamaica. It is our prime ministers who signed deals to destroy our cockpit country, our patriotic Jamaican prime ministers, Obania, who made those decisions. As a matter of fact, many of the decisions reached by our patriotic Banya politicians have been detrimental to Jamaica and primarily because they may have lacked the knowledge to negotiate effectively. I see them negotiating right now with China and many other countries and I can see clear as day that they have not a clue what they're doing. All they see is the top line of the negotiation how they're going to benefit immediately as a politician and as a government, but they have no understanding of the long-term implications of how it's going to affect their country. So this, this is my position. Let us take our eyes off what is fleeting and focus on the substance. Let me just bear with me for a second. I want to walk you through something here because I think this is critical. We need all three million of us at home, patriotic, Barnia, Livia, never left you. We need all three million. And by the way, that three million is diminishing for various reasons. We also need all four million Jamaicans abroad to join hands as one Jamaica, because the fact of the matter is we're stronger together. We started independence with a profitable Jamaica Omnibus Service. You remember that? That was our transportation um, system. We had that. Who built the JOS? Foreigners working with Jamaicans built a profitable Jamaica Omnibus Service, a profitable public transportation system killed by our leaders. We inherited a profitable year Jamaica. Coming from the colonials and Jamaicans working together, we built Air Jamaica, and it was profitable until we take it over and kill it. We killed our airports, and now it's in the hands of foreigners. We killed our ferry, gone. We killed our rail service, gone. We killed our water system. All the major water reservoirs we have were built by the colonials and not by us. We killed our thriving agricultural industries, banana, coffee, cocoa, you name it. We killed it. We killed our growing manufacturing industry. You remember metal box? You remember we used to build, we used to make the outlets and the switches right here in Jamaica. It gone now, all of them gone. We've killed our manufacturing sector. We, the patriotic, born here and never left your politicians did that. We killed the good network of roads that we have by bringing in all forms of corruption to the point where now we have to give away our land to private companies from overseas to build our highways and double tax us to drive on our own highways. We did that. We lost and sold just about everything 
to foreigners. It's better we have our own people with dual citizenship come here and help we than to have foreigners from our local leaders take away everything from we. It's a basic mathematics we have to look at here. We're mismanaging all of our assets. So we can't afford to dismiss more than half of our people because they have dual citizenship and tell them the only way you can come back here and help us in government is if you give up that which you have earned overseas. We cannot even build and maintain our own highways. We need the value-added intellect, the experience and the skill of the diaspora fully engaged. Let us not discriminate against our brothers and sisters. Let us work together to stamp out corruption including vote buying with the diaspora involved in the electoral process you can't buy the diaspora because three and five thousand dollar can't buy members of the diaspora they're bigger than that the income bigger than that so we have to leverage this situation to broaden our governance model and make sure that we have a balancing effect the first step in doing this is to give the diaspora equal voting rights with absentee ballots and the ability to run for any office as a dual citizens, as long as they come back to Jamaica. Look at the long lineups at the embassies. Almost every Jamaican one left the country. Why? Why don't want to leave the country? Why you have long lines at the US embassy? Long lines at the, the British? Long lines at the Canadian embassy? Because the people want to leave. Our indigenous leaders, those who never left here, those who are running things and those who want to get rid of the diaspora out of the picture, they are doing an atrocious job. And we need to balance that out by bringing the intellect of our people back. Don't allow bad mind to cause us to cut off our nose to spite our face. We need all hands on deck. Our population right now is declining. You go check it. For the first time in the history of Jamaica, our population is now declining. We're not growing. Singapore started out life with less than 2 million people. They have 6 million people now inhabiting the size of St. Thomas. We have less than 3 million people after the same number of years, more number of years than them as an independent country. Why? Our people are running away. And if we're foolish, we will lock them off forever, block them out as we have been doing, make life hard for them to participate in the country. And it's to our detriment. We need and we must embrace the diaspora as one away. The moral decline in Jamaica is alarming as our education system continues to fail more than 70% of our students. You know, all the way over 50 years old, know that Jamaica used to have a robust education system. Our people were among the creme de la creme when they graduate from high school. Look at us today. The best and the brightest are migrating, leading to a higher and higher concentration of the worst of us without the modifying and diluting effect of the best of us. You want a nation where the worst is balanced by the best and they come together and then you dilute the bad effects and bring up the rest of the nation. That's why we need the diaspora as a key part of our governance model. Anybody want to respond to that? I would even say, just to jump in, I would even go further to say, in, in complete agreement with, with everything you've said, um, go beyond that and saying, I think all Jamaicans should be given the opportunity to have dual citizenship. And those who are here should be given an opportunity in some way to explore other nations and other opportunities through exchange programs or education system. There's That's what China does. That's what yes. China does. China sends its people all over the world. Yes, yes. Let them go. I, I wanted to speak on that. I, I have a point here. If it brain drain when China sends its nationals all over the world to open haberdasheries and supermarkets. No, no, it's not brain it's drain. Not. China the framework is different. The framework is different. Yeah. Because based on the philosophy of Colonel Mao, they all know that they have a responsibility to the motherland. Mr. The Jamaicans in the diaspora have not demonstrated that responsibility to the Mr. motherland. You're talking they would want to stay where they are and assume political positions or, or, or representation and representative positions for the persons living in Jamaica? No, Mr. Bishop, let me clarify for you. We're not talking about you living in Canada. 
and being in Jamaica's parliament. We're not talking about that. We're talking about... No, but you're saying they should vote. You're saying the four million should vote. If there are three million here... Okay, I get If there are three million here, and you're going to give voting rights to four million living abroad, then you're okay. handing them the political system. No. Okay, I see what you're saying. I thought you were talking about something else. Um, just so you know, the country you admired earlier about the Americans and their Bonnier president, they allow the same thing. Their citizens can vote from overseas. Thank you. Of course, including including um Canada. Yeah, everybody can vote from overseas. Because I can vote from I can be in Jamaica and vote pre um before the the actual uh, thing. Um I don't wanna bump in yet. I wanna um, allow Mr. Direct Patriot to finish his well, conversation. Well, Miss Empress didn't finish her point. Miss Empress you wanna finish her oh, point. Oh sorry, go ahead, Bishop. please. Go ahead, Miss Empress. Finish your point and then Mr. Bishop. Oh, yes. Um, I, I wanted to, to just ex continue to say that, you know, the opportunity for people to ex experience life outside of Jamaica is valuable. And you were saying that that's what China does. And I think that that is for those Jamaicans who are who have been here, aren't able to leave. We need to create opportunities for them to be able to explore opportunities outside of Jamaica. We cannot lock people into poverty, which is what's happening now causing them to, to, to flee for economic opportunities when the opportunities are, are very much here. But if, as you mentioned, um, the rules or guidelines are not in place to facilitate that, then we're going to have people trapped in a, in a system. Two that's things, true. two things, Empress. I want to pick up on Mr. Bishop point. One, he mentioned about Chairman Mao in China, how he deliberately planned for the Chinese to go out and learn and come back. Now, that's leadership. Our people don't leave because of leadership helping them to think outside. Our people run away, run away from the economic dilemma. Listen, when I walk down at Elam down the road, so, and I see a, a woman in our yard with four or five picnic, and she, I got a call this morning from one. She don't have no food, nothing at all. She need some food right now. She's begging. She don't have nothing at all. This, this is right across our country. Can't send them kids to school. Can't pay for medical bills. Can't pay the rent. Can't fix the roof. Can't pay a bus fare. It is, it is atrocious. No. A leader, a good leader, an effective government understands and plan for and develop the economy of your people. Bad leaders rape the people and that's what we have in jamaica they have raped the people and then the people look for ways out if you go to any high school graduation and ask the kids what do you want to do they want to leave jamaica they leave university what do you want to do i can't find a job in my field at all i just be a call center work there whatever whatever and not even that is enough go on leave everybody mr bishop night if you walk down the road and ask 10 young person Nine out of them want to leave Jamaica. It's not because they're bad. Don't blame them. It's not because they're bad. Uh, my wife's mother, my beautiful, my lovely mother-in-law, she never leave Jamaica because she bad. She left Jamaica because the work was she had couldn't make ends meet. And she see an opportunity and she fly out and make something of herself and file for our daughter and give her a chance to get a university education and to make something of herself. Let us not blame our people for the failings of our leaders. They have failed, they have failed, they have failed. But I want to say this. Just recently, I had to file some annual returns here in Jamaica for my business. And I also had to file annual returns in Canada for my business. I was behind on my filings because of my work in the UIC that takes away my time. When I went to file my behind annual returns and stuff in Jamaica, it cost me initially two days and $187,000. I filed the same things in Canada. It cost me 15 minutes and $25. Okay. When I came back from my vacation, and my business trip overseas may get some paperwork that says, sorry, you need to come back again. It has cost me another day in the finish yet still, but roughly another day so far and a few more dollars, okay? And each case is 
take me the entire day. In Jamaica, the deal with it is the entire day. We're going to spend at the company's office the entire day at the tax office to do anything, to register my vehicle, to do it. Everything takes forever. I am a systems person. I'm a trained engineer. I'm a trained CPA. And when I look at their system, within one week, I could fix all of their systems with my training from Canada. I have worked in the Canadian government as a director of finance at the highest level, managing 15, sorry, $5 billion in budget. And I have seen how inefficient, incompetent, and under everything is just wrong in the way we design and manage our system here. And you want to tell me we hire 63 MPs, 228 councillors, and 23 senators, and we cannot fix those basic systems? No, sir. We must integrate the diaspora to come back and help us fix this problem. Thank you. All right, Mr. Um, can, I, can, I, can I say something now? Yes, go ahead, Mr. Patriot. Right. So, all of what I hear everybody say, it all comes back down to corruption. I, as I tell you, even if it, I, I, I'm personally one don't, who don't believe in um, that should be able with the bad water, basically. The Constitution is a moving document. It must be modified accordingly, right? And even before, Mr. Mr. President, you mentioned um, uh, the, the, the banana plant, the banana thing going out, the sugar thing going out. All of this is because of corruption. It's not necessarily because of lack of knowledge. You find that the person, you, you'll find that a carpenter being the head of, being Minister of Justice. You'll find that a, 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 a taxi owner, a owner of a taxi company, being um, the Minister of Health. All of that, all of that is because of But the system that. allows that. The system says you can do that. Yes, but what but I'm, but I, but I, but I, but I'm saying to you, even if, even if we, 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 um, so we change the constitution and allow diaspora people, you'll always find that because you don't address the, 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 the primary problem, which is corruption, the disease, the cancer in the thing, which is the corruption, and enforcing the laws on the books to, add, to, to, to deal with corruption. Because all of this, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, all of them have the, 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 the um, Barbados, all of them have, you could say colonial, like colonial, like colonial rule, but the thing that's less with them is corruption. That's why they that I think the that's why they hold on, stick up in, stick up in. Let's okay. let me reason. Let's reason this out. Let's reason this out. Yes. One system, uh, one system says you can appoint your friend and company to any position you want. Another right. system says you can't uh, you can't assign your friend and company to any position you want. Which one will have more corruption than the other? Well, I guess the one that says you can't, you cannot, mandatory, so you cannot, but they still no, Canada, but Canada, Canada, Canada is, have the no, same like us. No, but what, no, what I'm saying is no, but Canada, Canada put in place like laws. Barbados. Canada, let me deal with Singapore. I, I, I love studying Singapore. And the reason I did Singapore is because they got independence the same time as we, 1965, we got 1963. <laughs> and, and they started with their situation was worse than us. We had industries well developed. We spoke the same language for the most part. We were the same religious. So, so religiously, we were homogeneous. Language, we were homogeneous. Um, Industry-wise, we were more developed. They came with language barriers, um, race wars and race riots, um, uh, communists and whatever fighting. Japan had just decimated their country. Only for stuff, right? And so what? Lee Kuan Yew did. Let me give you an example of what they did in their, in their constitution. They rip up the one that Britain gave them. They, 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 they said, listen, this is not the work for me. So they said, listen, let's make sure we, we don't go with this monarch thing as head of our country. So that's a constitutional issue. They decide not to do that. Then they said, tell you what, in our House of Assembly, we're going to have a three-part system. I'm not recommending that for Jamaica. I think ours is better. I think what the U.S. is proposing is better. But they said, Let's set aside some seats for independence. That's what they did in their constitution. So they modeled said, you must have at least nine seats for independence in their model. Then they said, over here, so we need to have at least three seats that the president appoint based on his own latitude and stuff. And the others will run based on party and win. That's how that's they have it. So the balance. They also said, let's change the requirements for, for politicians who are going to serve in ministerial position. They have to have certain competences in order to be able to qualify to serve. So because of that, in their system, 
the best and brightest are attracted to the political arena because it makes sense. They can serve with, with a lot of dignity and not have their reputation shredded and so on. So they have attracted fine, intelligent, brilliant minds who can design their infrastructure. If you go to Singapore, remember Singapore is a small country, no resources. Jamaica is too small to do anything. We tell ourselves, right? We said Jamaica is too small. We can't afford anything because we're too small. They figured out how to build a railway system that circles the country, goes out into all the main areas. So I can be in pay labor 30 minutes away from, by, by train, 30 minutes away from Shanghai. And I must zoom, get there, no time, and conduct business and come back. If I try that in Jamaica, the whole day, it's a tech. Though, I, I, you want to tell me that after 80 years of the same two parties, after 62 years of independence, we still can't fix our public transport. But you said the issue is corruption. And what I'm saying is this, the corruption is caused by the system. If you don't put in place the system that is going to keep the guardrails on, you're going to have the politicians having the latitude to make these inefficient, ineffective, corrupt, bad decisions that lead us to where we are. So we cannot dismiss the importance of the design of the country. How you design the country guides and guardrails the leaders so that they can't do certain things. And when the UIC is done with this country, we're going to have a country where if you, if you elect a bad leader, the system handcuffs him or her. If you elect a good leader, the system empowers him or her. If you don't do that, you're going to end up with wishy-washy governments that will, man will be manipulated by the colonial powers and give us the outcomes we have seen in Jamaica. Singapore is a, a Bible that can show us how good governance works, even if we don't have to accept everything they do. But we must see the Constitution as the first principle. If we don't start with the first principle and hope to fix corruption on the back end, we will never get anywhere. Mr. Bishop. But then what if you have a leader that is a, has dual citizenship with a country that you don't have any extradition treaty with? Then that leader can just rub up and you'll be here waiting with your handcuffs after they book the flight to go back to that country that they have citizenship for. Wonderful point. And that is why you have the controls up front. You don't wait for him to fail and then run away. Your controls must be upfront. And by the way, he doesn't have to... Then what better control upfront, Mr. Patterson? What better control upfront than to say it cannot happen? You can't have it. What cannot happen? What cannot happen? That he can To run say away? you want to serve as a, in, the, in a public office in Jamaica, then it's fine. You're born here. You leave. You work anywhere you want. And we allow you to do that. And you return to Jamaica for 14 years before you can consider public office. You see, I don't want the members of the diaspora that hear me on this platform to think that I have anything against somebody who decided no, no, to, no, to migrate no, somewhere else. No, 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 point. Finish your point. Finish your, I want the point. Here's the but point I, that I made. Yeah, make the point, yeah. All right, I, I want to start. Let me start by, by, by fixing the point. I am not saying, I don't want the members of the diaspora to think that I am saying there is anything wrong with an individual Jamaican going to any other region, country, or, or place to, to seek an easier um, way to a better life or, or to financial um, stability or, 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 or freedom. Fine? Now you go here and you get it. When you go there and you get it, I, I would hope that while you were pursuing that for yourself, you considered any family member that you had in Jamaica. Now, that family member would probably be doing a business. Maybe that person is in uh, uh, running for office somewhere, in, and you would support that person while you're away. I don't have anything wrong with, 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 with Mr. Patterson's idea. In, in our new constitution that we're maybe discussing here to maybe give you um, give you guys franchise or, or that right to vote in the Jamaican election from wherever overseas territory you might be living. I, I am I am maybe even for that. But I am saying find your vote for somebody who is here. You support the businesses here. And that is the only safeguard that we need to put in place to ensure that the development benefits Jamaica 
Otherwise, you can have persons pillaging Jamaica the way that you have the French diamond companies pillaging uh, um, the, 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 the DRC. Mr. Bishop, Mr. Bishop, let me ask can you. Can I say something, Mr. President? And also, Sorry. I would like to step in. So please, Mr. Bishop, before you continue, I would like you to be you know, consider there's a, a few of us who would like to respond to your questions and answers, okay? Go ahead, let, me, let me take everybody out because I, I could respond right away. Who wants to go first? Ms. Ms. Walker, were you saying something? Ms. Yeah, Walker, yes. I'll, I'll, like to, <clears throat> I'd like to say that sometimes we as a people like to cut off our noses to spite our face. I want to return us to um, the Jamaican condition as it is currently. Jamaica population is dwindling. It's going beneath um, the growth census and curve rapidly. That means if we don't make a change and an immediate change, we're not gonna have a Jamaica to fight for. In the meantime, while we're fighting among each other, there are others having a keen eye at, at what, it's, what is at stake. Jamaica is a very rich and resourceful land and it's up for grab. We need each other. We don't need to be fighting against each other. We from the diaspora has developed a set of skill set that our country didn't give, ac give us access to. Rather, the diaspora countries like to brain drain and take the brightest. And so Jamaicans, whether they like it or not, needs to be prepared for the diaspora to return in order to fight for what is remaining of Jamaica. Because if you look at your Jamaican census, you will learn that your population in another 50 years will not belong to you. That means your offspring will have a lot more struggle and fight to have anything remotely close to what we consider as Jamaicans because it's up for grab. And so we need the brightest and the best to step in place and make Jamaica work in the most favorable way for our people. Here, here, period. Here, here. Thank you. Mr. Duff, uh, Mr. Petra, please don't let me forget to come back to you because I don't think you finished your thought as well. Mr. Duff, go ahead. Yes. Um, you know, okay, I heard a lot of um, information you were passing on, Mr. Bishop, and you are getting to be rather confused of what you're stating. And why I say that is this. You are in agreement and you're in a disagreement. Okay, you can't be having your cake and eating it too. Okay, for instance, yes, the diaspora is vital. You've said that, but you have an um, apprehension in allowing. You may allow us to come back and vote. No, that's not even, a, it, it is actually, those choices will be um, in the constitution and it is the constitution will, the next constitution will be formed by the Jamaican, not um, any individual prime minister or so forth. So that is not even an issue. The other thing is, it is a fact. The information you're hearing stated, these are factual. Diaspora did not leave voluntarily to go for um, a vacation. We choose to leave because of economical reasons. And that is a 100% fact. Also, our best are leaving the island. It's true, 100% again, because the average individual in Jamaica who leaves on less than average educated they go away on farm work, not to come to a country like this and offer, um, you know, Canada or United States or England and go into a professional. They have to be well qualified and vetted and rechecked and requalified and requalified in order to even get in as a position. Thirdly, I'm going to say something again. I can give you a million information why Jamaica right now needs the diaspora and if you are not sitting and watching and taking notes and paying attention and other jamaicans who believe the diaspora is a cash cow we should only go away as you've just stated and support other jamaican in their political endeavor that is not it is not just part of the um the corruption process 
It is beyond that. Education, educated, and the previous and the current generation, like if you can take a look at my hair, you'll notice it's white. That means I've seen a lot and I've experienced a lot. And I am aware of what is currently needed to put the Jamaican population back into its actual um, trajectory that it should be on. Thank you, Mr. Doc. I, okay. just want to, I just want to quickly respond, <clears throat> if you don't mind, to uh, Carleen Smith. I think that's a very important question. And I don't want to give the impression that there's any resistance to renouncing citizenship. I want us to be practical and pragmatic. Here's the fact. Um, I'll use myself, right? Because I am obviously biased and obviously conflicted because I am a Jamaican citizen and I'm also a Canadian citizen. I never hide it, by the way. You know, you might have other politicians who have hid that they're dual. I have never hidden my status from the day one when I entered politics, I made very clear that I am both Jamaican and Canadian. Now, let's think about it. As a Canadian citizen, when I take out my passport, I can go to the Netherlands, to Finland, to China, to Africa, to India, to Malaysia, to Myanmar, to France, to Germany, um, anywhere in the world without any issues. Okay? You're I adding to my point. Hold on, hold on. I wish that the Jamaican passport was that powerful. Mm -hmm. And I will make the Jamaican passport that powerful. But until that, here's what happened now with a dual citizen. You're asking Mr. Duff to come back home. He wants to come home and he wants to help to rebuild Jamaica. And by the way, when he comes home, he's going to run up into a whole heap of roadblock. He's going to be sabotaged. He's going to be undermined. He's going to be stolen from. Even his life will be in danger. That's the reality we're talking about. Reality. Not playing no games now. When you come back to this country, I've been back now 13 years. It is the roughest 13 years of my last 30 years. Thank you. Roughest 13 years of my last 30 years. I left Jamaica as a young man. My early 20s. I thought I was on top of the world. I went to UTEC, did engineering, got my good job first as a teacher of engineering, science, physics, and mathematics, and then went on to sugar company and get my assistant manager position. And I'm, I feel I'm big boy. Yeah. May I, may I get chauffeur driven to work and my money is so big, we can buy my mother a sofa set and say, yeah, mommy will take care of you or whatever. And I feel big. Then I migrate to Canada and Canada just chopped me down to size. And say, so you're yeah. nobody. Canada said, look, you, you say you know to use a late. Come here, sir. Look on that. What is that? Uh, what are you talking about? That's a late. I'm looking for something where you put another thing and you roll up and you, you put up your thing and you try to fix it. You push the gauge and they go and run it. It's another one. It's a PLC, a programmable logic circuit. You punch, bam, 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 put the metal in, wait for 15 minutes. It's done. In a Jamaica, that would take me the whole day. Thank you. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's spoil the one day. Try another one. So I got to Canada. They cut me down to size. I grow back up now. Yeah? Work and mop the floor in the, in the restaurant, wait at the table, learn customer service a different way now. I learn to appreciate people differently now. Yeah? And my, 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 my figure out how to become, um, what they call it, my inventory clerk, then accounting clerk, then accounting supervisor, then accounting manager, then uh, um, VP of finance, director, CFO. Yeah? Boom! <clears throat> Now we learn whole eat more things, see whole eat more stuff. It's a bratted. Jamaica can be like this man. Bam, come back on my country now, 40 years old. Go and change the world. You're mad. We don't want that. Now you think that me want to give up my Canadian passport before me figure out how to get this thing working properly. So I can't but give it up. Yeah, but give it up because you say so. And then now they just chop me the right now. I'm in court right now. They have been court now for three years because I led a peaceful protest to say, my body, my choice, respect the man right for choose, where am I going to put it in my body? And them lock me up. And if they had a chance, I'm going to throw away the key. You won't tell me, so me must trust myself to this. No, I want us to get this thing right. And I am... Two different motivations of the whole life. Two different motivations. Hold on. Hold on. I am very appreciative of my Canadian passport. 
and I'm very appreciative of my Canadian experience and I'm willing and ready to give all that I can to the Jamaican people but don't tell me about for you to trust me you must give up my Canadian but no I do it I am going to work with you and I'm going to try to help you but if you want me to give up what has helped me when I went to Singapore the other day I don't have to worry but just go even though Singapore does have a special thing with Jamaica but I could then traverse all kinds of other countries I could stop in a France, do something, stop in a, the Netherlands and do something, stop in a Malaysia and do something. We need to get Jamaica there. And I want us to be sensible and pragmatic and stop playing these fool fool games with each other and want to lock off 50% of our people. Let's get real about the reality and fix the problem so that Jamaica can move forward and stop playing these hypocritical games that we, you, know, you have to have this and don't do this. Let us respect, engage all Jamaicans and leverage your skills. I am here for 13 years, suffering with you, paying the price with you. Don't tell me to pay no more price by giving up what allows me to travel everywhere in the world. Back to you, Mr. Bishop. Yeah, personal interest, Mr. Patterson. Yes, of course, very yeah. personal. And yours, and yours should be personal too. Personal interest, you have national interest. I do understand and applaud all of the work and time effort that you put in developing your personal interest as the big as a businessman good now with that time sir i am hoping that you would have made the best of it now when you assume when you apply for canadian citizenship you are making a choice based on the nation that you felt would best take care of your needs you just explained your need to travel you, you just explained that, um, that the, the power of that Canadian passport allow you to travel to so many places. And then I could heard you, um, hear you passionately say, I should not ask you to give it up, to come to Jamaica and, and work or serve for the development of Jamaica. And here's what I want to ask you, Mr. Patterson. What if I could find another individual who would have led a life of parallel? to all are parallel to all of what you just said. Good? So that person worked in Jamaica, tried to climb the ranks, found it difficult, migrated to Canada. And that person took some time, however long you were in Canada, and worked to develop their personal economy to, to whatever level they felt they needed it to be. And then they made a decision that, you know, I need to go fix my country. And that person, with the resolve in their mind, decided that Jamaica is what I'm going to give the rest of my life. Now, that person would be willing to give up their Canadian passport because that person would have had a vested interest in Jamaica for the rest of their life. However, Mr. Patterson, the reservation that you are explaining in giving up your Canadian, your strong Canadian passport, it tells me, for one, that you value that Canadian passport. Of course. So what it means, Mr. Patterson, is that if after your efforts to improve Jamaica have failed, let us say the evil or um, any one of the, the parties that have been in control for so long decide that because Jamaica people voting for UIC now, they are going to start civil unrest in Jamaica. Then everyone there who would have been with you fighting for the cause would be left to die Bujo has a song when he said, who can afford to run will run. But what about those who can't? They will have to stay. You cannot be the leader telling us Jamaicans to assemble behind you to die for the cause when you are not willing to give up that passport and, and die with us. Now I am saying to everybody in the diaspora, please, please, allow me to finish. I am saying, the fact that you guys are here still on a platform talking about the developments in Jamaica, you guys still have love and loyalty for Jamaica. I already respect, love, and appreciate all of you. Here's what I'm saying. As we have these conversations to develop these, this, our new constitution, I would appreciate if you guys would would understand the same way that Mr. Duff said, I can't have my cake and eat it. 
you guys are trying to incorporate in our new constitution a mode for you to have your cake and eat it too. I think, right. like, let's take China, for example. If, so, if, if a public official is found guilty of theft or embezzlement, the punishment is death. It might sound harsh. For a lot of territories, they, they argue about the, the human rights impact or, or the human rights breaches that these um, statements in law might, might, might show or, or the light that it sheds on China. And I think that is what you do when you have a vested interest. You let people know that this is how it is going to go and no other way. You wanting to hold on to your dual citizenship, Mr. Patterson, is a backup plan an exit strategy yes, and you cannot ask well-thinking jamaicans to have full confidence in you and your vision to develop jamaica whatever the cost if you are not willing to make that commitment to the thank you. task thank you, Mr. Bishop. and i can say this to you with absolute clarity and absolute certainty that i am going to be and always will be 100% honest with Jamaican people. And if you want to lie to yourself, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to make it clear to you that I value what Canada offers. I am Correct. happy that I have my Canadian uh, passport and I'm happy that I'm able to do what has been denied all Jamaicans who haven't gotten that opportunity. And I want to give them that opportunity. If you want me to cut off my neck before I give them that opportunity, I will not do it. I am not going to do it. I am going to work for the people. Hear what happened. You have a prime minister who does not have, as far as I know, any dual citizenship. But that prime minister has found it worked. necessary to incorporate his company overseas to own even his house while Thank being you. your single citizenship prime minister. <laughs> you have a prime minister, Mr. Bishop. Oh. Mr. Bishop, a prime minister who has not renounced his king council, even though he claimed that he wants to make Jamaica a republic. You have a prime minister who is willing and was willing to inject his entire nation with a, with a drug that he himself doesn't understand, which was not fully tested and which is still being questioned and there is evidence coming up to show that this was extremely dangerous so you would have had a prime minister who is willing to inject a hundred percent of his people while not having any dual citizenship me a canadian citizen come back to jamaica and put my life on the line and fought against that prime minister and against that decision to defend the people of jamaica don't tell me that the only way you can trust me is if I give up what I have earned. I am happy for what I've earned from Canada. I will use what I've earned from Canada and I will defend the interest of Jamaica and I will be the kind of leader that will stand up for us. But I will not be a fool and give up what now helps me to travel the world freely and do business freely without being shady like some who have led us. There are prime ministers who have land and buildings in other countries as we speak. There are prime ministers who just before they left office changed the law and said they must get the same dollar value pension as a sitting prime minister, even though they're not doing the work of a prime minister. Thank you. That's what you get from people who have not thought about protecting the interest of Jamaica. My Canadian citizenship does not make me any less or any more Patriot than Jamaican. What it makes me is a Jamaican that has been exposed, a Jamaican with external experience, and a Jamaican who have made the conscious decision to leave the beautiful, comfortable life of Canada and come back to Jamaica. When I decided to come back home, I could have gone to Florida. The US, the USA offered me the green card to come to Finham country. My right. entire family, they have written to me, they have asked me over and over, aren't you going to take it up? I said, I don't need it. I'm already in Canada. I already have Canadian and I've decided to go back home to Jamaica, but I'm leveraging the benefits of my years That's in Canada right. and leveraging the passport that I have from Canada to work on behalf of the Jamaican people. And I am very appreciative 
to the government and the people of Canada for the opportunity that they have afforded me. And I'm glad to lend that to my countrymen and to my country. Well, if I if I if I'm allowed to just finish my yes. point here, go ahead. I, 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 I just like to say, as I say, Jamaica is too small of a country to compete globally with 40 percent or 30 percent of our population. We need 100 percent of our population to compete globally, right? And um, as I say, no matter even if Jesus wrote the Constitution, if you don't have people enforcing the laws, because the Constitution is basically a book of laws, and if you don't have people enforcing it. And, and stamping out corruption, no matter what happens, you'll always find. You see, we have um, Jamaicans who have just one citizenship and leadership positions, and they have houses all over the world, pretty much. There's no body to input. There, there's laws on the books that, 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 that would, 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 would um, stop them from doing that and stopping them from being corrupt. But the whole person, the whole clique, just seem to be corrupt, and there's no laws um, being enforced to stop them. So even if so, now we need all Jamaicans to come together and get rid of corruption, and we modify the constitution accordingly. We don't need to throw the baby with the bathwater. Just modify the areas that benefit Jamaica and enforce the laws and the books. El Salvador do it, and and see them move from 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 pretty much the bottom of the barrel till almost up just by eliminating most of the corruption. Mm -hmm. And the same thing can happen for Jamaica. We need all our, our, our population to compete globally. We need all Jamaicans, all hands on deck. Thank you very much. Point. Thank you very much, Mr. Petra. We still disagree with you. Um, <laughs> a, bad, a bad constitution with a bad foundation needs to go. And we need to have a constitution written by Jamaicans for Jamaica. But let me say this. Um, a Jamaican with a dual citizenship, Mr. Bishop and, and anybody else who think otherwise. A Jamaican with a dual citizenship is no less patriotic and no Thank less you. loyal to Jamaica than a Jamaican with only Jamaican citizenship. In fact, most Jamaicans in the diaspora and all of them that I've spoken to except one or two long to come home and would be more inclined to do so if they saw a light at the end of the tunnel. My job, self-imposed, unpaid, my job is to provide that light. The PM noted that we have a shortage of skilled workers in this country, and there is nowhere more evident than in the government. We need to tap into the diaspora to address the serious shortage of skilled individuals to help lead our country to real prosperity. I know that the Prime Minister's talk about skilled workers is because he plans to work with other nations That's to right. populate Jamaica with other people who will continue to take over all of our industries and make Jamaicans tenants in their own country. But I'm not that way. I want to populate Jamaica with the diaspora, allow them to come back home, create avenues for them to come back home, give them the light at the end of the tunnel so that they know that there is a government in Jamaica that is fully and unequivocally committed to having all Jamaicans gain full access to their country, including getting back the land that was stolen from them how many years ago through slavery and other means. We must seek, my friends, we must seek to utilize the diaspora's knowledge and experience to quickly transform Jamaica into a first-class nation, no less than Singapore. What I say, no less than Singapore. They Another two quick Another two quick points, and I will allow someone else to respond. Could you wait a second for me, please, mister? I just want to yes. finish my talk here. Now, Singapore is 115 our land size. Singapore gained independence three years after us from England. They had less than 10% of our resources. We had more social, political, and economic, um, what do you call it now, togetherness. They had more social, political, and economic problems than we. But they chose to focus on good governance. We chose something else. This made them richer than even America on a per capita basis, GDP per capita basis. Singapore today, richer than America on a GDP per capita basis. We can do this too. But only by uniting 
liberating and empowering our people. And we cannot do that unless we do what Mr. Patriot is saying, recognize the 100% population, not just the near half in the country, but the other half and more than half that's outside the country. Only by joining together as one Jamaica can we recognize the benefit of being stronger together. Go ahead, sir. Okay, my two point is basically, okay, um, Mr. Uh, Bishop also mentioned a vested interest, an individual must have a vested vested interest, which I don't have a problem and I believe and I and I believe in that as well. This is why I would say I addressed you and saying you are contrary or you're being confusing in this in the issue. It's not a matter of we all want to have vested interest and that is a must. And I have not met any politician or hear of any politician do, who does not have a vested interest in Jamaica, whether per, on a personal level or on a community or country vested interest. And that is a must. And they are. And there have been many that came by that literally, though they had their vested interest, they still walk away and rob the nation. The other point that I'm going to make now is this. It's not all the diaspora were um, are, were Jamaican citizen. Were actually, they went out at age 21 to sign a uh, um, sign up for an application for a uh, new uh, citizenship of another nation, which would give, grant them that passport. Some of us came to the foreign country at a young age where it was literally passed through through our parents. Now, what do you do with those individuals? And they, they're the one who's continually, or they have shown that they have a vested interest in Jamaica. What would you do with those individuals? You can answer that whenever you get the opportunity to. Yes, sir. I want, to respond to I want to respond to that now. We are going to take the example of Singapore. It's a partisan like Singapore. The, the information that I have here, the Singapore government does not allow its adult citizens to hold dual citizenship. Full stop. Let's take, exa let's take the example. Yes. Uh, We're yeah. talking about the example. Let's take the example. Yes. Why is what is good for the goose not yeah. good for the gander? Wonderful. Let me respond to that, Mr. Bishop. I'm very happy that you have brought that up. Very, very happy that you have brought it up. Let's think about it now. Let's think about it. So Singapore has made it that you cannot have dual citizenship in Singapore. Great. Now let's compare what the two countries have done. If you, Mr. Bishop, were born in Singapore, you, I don't know how old you are, if you were born in Singapore, you would have absolutely no desire to leave. If you go to Singapore today, from east to west and north to south, you're going to feel completely safe. You're going to find that the environment is clean and beautiful. You're going to find that the environment is extremely orderly. You would have received world-class education. You would have one of the highest income level compared to any other countries in the world. Your life expectancy would be more than that of Jamaica's. Your child would have every opportunity in the world to be the best that they can be. They can afford to do what they have done. But since you have raised the issue, since you have raised the issue... They did not wait, Mr. Patterson. They did not wait until they fixed the problems to establish that law. Let me, let me say this. No, as I said to you before, we're not going to do everything that Singapore does because you have to look at various factors. So that's one thing that they've done that I'm not proposing. But watch this carefully. Let's move to Canada for a second. In Canada, you can be a dual citizen. In Canada, you can serve as a MP and as prime minister as a dual citizen. In Canada, you don't have to be born in the country to be the head of its government in Canada. Now, various countries have different rules. What I'm saying is for Jamaica, we need to do what is best for Jamaica. And I am proposing, you don't have to agree. You don't have to agree. But I am proposing, and I am certain, that the best course of action for Jamaica, given our reality today, is to ensure we fully integrate all Jamaicans, regardless of dual citizenship, and not to punish them because of dual citizenship, and to leverage their dual That's my suggestion. You don't have to follow. That's the point. 
Right, that's what I'm saying, no, Mr. Patterson. Please allow me to clarify. Like, yeah. there's a lot of what you just said that aligns with my philosophy. So, so let us see if we can pinpoint the distinctions here and, and, and understand what I'm saying. I holistically agree that the four million members of the Jamaican overseas diaspora should be a part of the push to improve Jamaica. Thank you. So let me make that point clear to everyone. Now, I am saying in terms of leadership for the person signing on to the contracts, for the persons doing the discussions and the negotiations on our part, we are tired of having persons who are negotiating on a country level for their personal interests. That's the root of the government corruption that has been forcing Jamaicans into a more difficult socioeconomic position daily. Persons who are in public office because for their personal interests. Mr. Bishop, let me, let, me, let me raise a point to you that I hope you will appreciate. Every single solitary human being in their right mind will always look out for their personal interests. They might lie to you. They might lie to you and say otherwise. Follow me. Just bear with me. Bear with me. Just listen for a second. Listen. Listen to me carefully. I love to be very honest with you. I don't like... I. You might seem involved in politics, but I hate politics because of what it represents. But follow me. Every single solitary human being, and it is very important, acts in their personal self-interest. Everyone, every human. They might lie to you and tell you otherwise. Now follow me carefully. What you want is a system of incentives and disincentives that guides your people to make good decisions. So they're going to want to be corrupt. If you have a company, Mr. Bishop, and I've done several companies, I've built what they call internal controls for hundreds of companies. Companies that have weak internal controls, they may hire Mother Teresa, a saint, and because the company has weak internal controls, the saint turns into a devil because they find out they can break this loophole and break. Let's make it Jamaican for a second. When a Jamaican returned to the diaspora from them good, good Canada or them good, good USA or them good, good um, UK, and they're used to certain ways of doing things, like, for example, for their cars to be registered, for their vehicle to be registered and fitness to be done, and they're used to them nice, nice, good, good Canadian way where there's no hassle. It's very simple and easy. You they're can add on individual riders at your delight and save on your insurance yeah. and insure yeah. maybe one half of one specific yeah. aspect. Yeah, and all the government aspect of it is just smooth and crisp. And then them, then them come back to Jamaica now and say, ah, me come back and my help the country now. When they come back, they reach a big roadblock. If they don't give them a little something on the table, it's hard and difficult and long and painful and holy for sufferation for them to just get their vehicle passed. If they're importing a vehicle, if them, if them go the normal way, it's long and it's painful and torturous and it may even sit on the wall forever, depending on what happens. But if them slip something, why? The system, the system, the system. And because of the system, you turn good people into criminals. Jamaica is very good at turning good people into criminals and turning criminals into bigger criminals. We are a production machine of corruption, a production yeah. machine of scammers, a production machine of deceivers, a production machine of thieves because of the system. Of course, you need good leadership, but you need the leadership to focus on changing the system because when you change the system, you change the behavior. I'll give you one more example. There's a time when Jamaica had no GCT and when Mr. Patterson, PJ, thought about bringing in GCT, they said, it now nah work. Jamaicans would never do that. Today, we're all eagerly and normally doing GCT and paying GCT. So it moved from 7% to 16%. And it's now back to 16 and a half, down back to 15 now. But we will change if our leaders change. And I'm saying, them the leader that we will have, 
They are committed to corruption. They are used to corruption. They are trained in corruption and they will keep corruption. We the people have to rise up now and we cannot do it by ourselves locally here. We have to join hands with our brothers and sisters who are in a position to help us and who have the knowledge and experience to add to us. Let's make it about Jamaica and not about your dual citizenship because that will lock off 50% of us from participating in the mm -hmm. process. Mr. Duff, Mr. Duff. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think Mr. Patterson just did what I what you said I was guilty of earlier, you know, because Mr. Patterson started by telling me that every individual will always think and act in their personal interest. But by the end of his discourse, he was saying for the nation. No, <laughs> and no, here's what I'm Mr. Bishop. Here's what I'm let me let me correct Please. myself. Let me correct myself so that you Hold on, hold on. Let me hear him out first. Yes. Let me let me correct myself, okay? Every individual will act in their personal self-interest, okay? And then even me, when I do, why, why am I doing what I'm doing? I want a better Jamaica for my right, right. my grandchildren. Let me use an analogy to explain that. I do understand what you're saying, Mr. Pattison. So let me use a boat analogy. We are all on a rowboat, and this is a boat with oars. So we are, we are all 20 of us on the boat, and we all want to go north. Because some uh, we all on the boat live north. You will find that effortlessly everyone will row. Because we all want to go north. Now some could argue that we are rowing in our personal interest. While others would say, no, they are rowing for the interest of the boat. For that ship to get there. That's why the 20 of them are rowing. So the truth is, it would be both in that case because they all would see benefit in rowing because they want the boat to go north. True. So they are all acting for the group, but their direction will serve their personal interest. That's true. Now, now Mr. Patterson, I am saying to you, the commitment or the person, the individual that will save Jamaica will be someone who I think maybe like you would travel and taste the luxuries of the world and they would see the differences and they would understand that struggle exists everywhere. So we're talking about Singapore. I am certain that Singapore's government has its challenges that it is working on now. We spoke about the US. The US government has their challenges that they're working on now. What I am saying is that we need to clearly outline the different facilities that we will have for the different positions. So I am not saying, Mr. Patterson, that I don't trust that you have Jamaica's best interest at heart. But I am saying, as we argue this new constitution, I know that your decision about dual citizenship is clouded based on the fact that you want to hold on to yours. You use the phrase that we should not punish well-thinking Jamaicans in the diaspora who might want to come back with the trait of saying you have to renounce your citizenship to that foreign country before you can serve in Jamaican parliament. And this is what I'm saying. We are not saying you have to renounce your Jamaican, um, your external citizenship in order to come here and, and take up um, some activism in politics or in Jamaica's politics. We're not saying you have to leave where you are. As I said, I would, and this is why I, I sounded conflicted, Mr. Duff, because in considering allowing 4 million people to vote in our national, remember, you know, national elections, to me, I, I would have to take more time to process it, Mr. Duff. But with that said, I am saying, I am saying, I would not want to disenfranchise any of those members of the diaspora either. So on that point, I would be willing to do some more research, maybe listen to some more Jamaicans and have and put more consideration on that point. Thank you. But no, on the dual citizenship point, you cannot show me, Mr. Patterson, one single point or benefit that the country on a whole. So let us go back to those Jamaicans now who do not have any other 
I don't have a visa, I don't have any other passport, any other citizenship. They will not get a single benefit from us legislating that the persons who, who represent them in politics are allowed to have dual citizenship. The dual citizenship will benefit the person, the individual, Mr. because Mr. at any time you can jump ship. No, sorry, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt you, but I have to move on. But let me just clarify that piece for you. The benefit to all Jamaicans of allowing dual citizen Jamaicans to serve in their governance is that they get the benefit of those persons serving. So you might not see that as a benefit. You might not see the competencies that they bring or anything like that. But I'm saying that's the value. In fact, let me put it this way by giving you an example of a multicultural country, a country that has done fairly well compared to many others. In Canada, any Canadian citizen may run for political office whether or not they have another citizenship or whether or not they were born in another country. So that's their decision. We may not like it, but they decided. Now, Canada, um, they have had prime ministers who have been dual citizens. They've also had prime ministers who were born outside of Canada. Now, they have experimented with this for 157 years. I believe they have done pretty well with having dual citizens in their parliament and in their governance and in their prime minister seat. I believe they have done fairly well compared to many countries. Canada has for many years been, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Patriot, has been a number one country in the world in terms of where people aspire to live and, and go. Many Jamaicans want to go there, many Jamaicans go to school there and stay there. So they, and, and those Jamaicans who go there, we've had Jamaicans who have served as senators, as MPs, you know, uh, uh, councillors. So the Jamaicans who go there are fully really welcome in terms of participating in the governance model. At least they're not, they're not prevented by virtue of the constitution if they wanted to participate. Okay, so that's that's 150 years of example we have. We can learn from it or not, but I believe Canada has figured out that it's wiser to be embraced of this wider consensus of people than to be very narrow in their focus. Now, Mr. Patriot pointed out earlier on that we can't afford to be so narrow. We're too small and we're even now declining. Go and check the population statistics. We're now declining in population. As I explained before, we have a higher concentration now of the wrong kinds of Jamaicans by virtue of the failing of our education system. The Canadians were wise not to limit themselves by law, but to leave it up to the people of Canada at the ballot box to decide if they want to elect a person who happens to have dual citizenship or who happens to have been born in another country, so long as they have Canadian citizenship. They have done that and it has worked for them. In conclusion tonight, because we have to go now, I want to advise us to choose pragmatism over idealism. Singapore has been very good at that. They've been very pragmatic. I believe it's important to be pragmatic than to be idealistic. Jamaica needs every help we can get to eliminate bad governance and the culture of crime, scamming, and corruption it breeds. I believe we need to tap into the diaspora by allowing those with dual citizenship to serve our country in any and every capacity. It will do us more good than harm. We have enough evidence globally of countries who have done it different ways. We can learn from them. But what is very clear, Jamaica is too far down the rabbit hole of bad governance to deny itself the assistance of any Jamaican. Allow the diaspora to register and to vote by absentee ballots similar to America. Allow dual citizens to offer themselves to serve in any office similar to Canada. We must unite, we must liberate, we must empower every Jamaican by focusing on good governance now. We need to embrace all Jamaicans and create one Jamaica, united, strong, and free. One Jamaica because we are indeed stronger together. And that's my closing call to action for us tonight. Thank you all so, so very much for joining us on this conversation. Look forward to a part two. 
when we are going to delve into um, the UIC's version of the Constitution. Thank you all for being here. I'm going to give each of you one second now to just say what you took away from this. One sec, 30 seconds, each of you. Not a long time, right? but I want everybody to hear your what you're taking away from this as a patriot who have participated. Go ahead, uh, go first. Did you say myself, Mr. Patterson? Yes, I am Mr. Walker. Just 30 oh, seconds. Okay, what, mm, yeah, I don't need to listen and to have an open mind is what I'm taking away from this conversation. Thank you. Uh, Empress Zaria, your closing thought, 30 seconds. I'm happy to hear that, that we have an option as a people that doesn't look like the current policy, um, um, political uh, offices that is in place. I'm happy that you're extending this opportunity to us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the real deal or the real patriot, your 30 seconds. Okay, we need, we need all Jamaicans united. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, you're good now, you're good. Yeah, we need all Jamaicans united to put forward the strongest Jamaica, to give Jamaica the best chance. We can't afford to go into a war with one hand, one foot, but we have the choice to use two hands and two foot. Excellent. Um, well, so we need to clean up the corruption, and that's it. Mr. Bishop, 30 seconds. Um, I want to thank everybody here for being here. Thanks to Mr. Patterson for organizing these events. I think as long as we as Jamaicans embark on, the, on events such as this, we will get to a better place. So I, I don't want anybody to leave here thinking that I am against persons or members of our international diaspora. I wish you all love and light until next time. Thank you. Mr. Duff, 30 seconds. Uh, again, I'd like to thank you all, and it was an excellent party. And uh, Mr. Um, Bishop, I, am, I welcome you. I don't believe that we have any differences. We are just touching the tip of the iceberg, and I know all diaspora and will come back and help to build, rebuild our country. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Samuels. I did gain from this discussion and we're hoping to meet again to discuss other things. Thank you, Mr. Night, Samuel. night, everyone. Good night. night. Mr. Rebel X, uh, if, you, if you're there. Y yes, seconds. I'm there. Yes, I'm there. Yeah, I, I love the conversation. Um, for my take on it, I don't believe the dual citizenship is really the problem still. But, you know, we just need to unite as a, you know I mean, as, as one and, and make this thing work. A big sound, a big, big, big tune. Ja all is Emmanuel I woe Ja Gideon I'm a Gideon The Gideon I'm a Gideon The Gideon I'm a Gideon well Gideon go bossing out the mat again So much oppression poor people face right now Them crying out for freedom Them crying out for free speech then Say them want to stand up like them black liberators Like Malcolm X and Martin Luther And the Asian monarchy will come pay up the way sir Free up black people from me tell them them fence ya Gideon I'm a Gideon The Gideon I'm a Gideon the Gideon, I'm a Gideon, well, the Gideon go bustin' out the mat. I listen to the CI, the power of the Trinity, give us the teaching of his majesty, and we know war, no devil philosophy. Not ten trickle every from my skin is of no more significant well. To the color of his eye, remember all the war done in 1935. This is Sticky Stucky Sweet TV with Keith Gargan. Good healthy food with the X Factor. So give it a like, share, subscribe and touch up that notification bell. And that is it. Look at that.